Hello everyone, welcome to this new message. Today let's commit the meeting to the Lord before we begin our study. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace and mercy in granting us your word. Your word is food for our souls. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that by your Holy Spirit you would lead us into all truth as we study your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to this new message. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua, chapter 1. Joshua, chapter 1. We're going to read the first nine verses. Joshua, chapter 1. Verses 1 to 9. Let's read them together. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. Verse 1, here we go. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, Thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given to you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand nor to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father, for your word. Well, as it may be no surprise to you, I have entitled this message, Entering the Promised Land. Entering the Promised Land. <coughs> now, Brethren, there are many people, including some who profess to be followers of the Lord Jesus, who seem to believe that the Old Testament scriptures are of no relevance to the church today. Let me say here that I personally think that this notion is foolish in the extreme. The Old Testament scriptures are, in my opinion, of equal importance and relevance to the church today, as are those of the New Testament. In fact, I would go so far as to say that without an understanding of the Old Testament, one would struggle to gain a true understanding of the New Testament. There's a very good and insightful saying which goes something like this. The New Testament in the Old Testament is concealed and the Old Testament in the New Testament is revealed. 
those of you who study the Word of God on a regular basis, will surely know that the Bible is one complete narrative. It is the history, not only of creation, but of the interaction of God the Father with mankind. This narrative is, however, not yet complete. It culminates with the marriage of Christ to his bride, the Church and the judgment of God on this world. Then there will be a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Can I say an, hear an Amen from you today? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Nevertheless, back to our study for today. Now, in our text, we meet Joshua at a very important point in his life. Moses, God's servant, is dead. This man whom God had called personally and who had, along with his brother Aaron, confronted Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Moses had, at God's command, called down the ten plagues that had so dis disseminated Egypt and its people that Pharaoh was forced to release the Hebrews. After their release, Moses had led them for some 40 years in their wanderings through the wilderness to the very brink of the promised land. Now the man whom God had chosen to bring them out of bondage in Egypt and to whom he had given the law and whom the people thought would lead them into the promised land was dead. This passage of scripture which serves as the text for our study today can be so easily passed over when in reality it holds so much truth which is meant for each and every one who holds the name of Christ Jesus as dear in their lives. First of all let's look at the way the Lord speaks unto Joshua. The Lord speaks unto Joshua. Verses 1 and 2 of our text. Let's read them again to refresh our memories. <clears throat> Verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give unto them, even to the children of Israel. Now either during or at the end of their time of mourning for Moses, God speaks to Joshua the son of Nun, who had been the servant of Moses. The words that God was to say to Joshua would mark a great change in his life and indeed for the children of Israel. Joshua himself had also been a slave in Egypt along with the rest of the Hebrews. However, he had become a soldier, <coughs> even a general in the defence of his people as they wandered in the wilderness. He was though also a very godly man. He spent much time before the Lord, as had Moses. This can be seen in the following scriptures which show both Moses and Joshua in the tent of meeting. I'll say more about the tent of meeting afterwards. But we're going to read from Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. We're going to read from verse 7 to verse 11. Exodus chapter 33 verses 7 to 11. Verse 7. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that every one 
which sought the Lord, went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass, when Moses went out unto the tabernacle, that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door, and looked after Moses, until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended, and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Amen. Praise God. Now, the tent of meeting. This tent of meeting was a temporary place where Moses and anyone else, including Joshua, could seek the Lord, etc. This tent was no longer needed after the construction of the true tabernacle, which God instructed Moses to build according to the pattern he gave him. The choice of Joshua as a replacement for Moses had already been discussed, actually, between God and Moses. Let's look at the scriptures concerned here. Numbers chapter 27. Numbers chapter 27, first of all, verses 15 to 18. Numbers 27, verses 15 to 18. Verse 15 of Numbers 27. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thine hand upon him. Now we're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 20, sorry, Deuteronomy 31, verses 7 and 8. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 7 and 8. Verse 7, let's read together. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that goeth before thee, he will be before thee, he will be with thee, sorry. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. And finally we're going to look at the same chapter, but verse 14. Deuteronomy 31 verse 14, here we go. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, the days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation, that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. Hallelujah. This, of course, being the real tabernacle, not the tent of meeting. So then, yes, Joshua knew in advance that he would be the one to lead the people into the promised land. But knowing that you are called to do something and actually having to do it are two different things, aren't they? As those of you who have been called to specific ministries 
will know all too well. It should be remembered at this point that there were possibly somewhere over 2 million people gathered on the east bank of the Jordan River. At this time when God spoke to Joshua, over 2 million people, all of whom were now the responsibility of Joshua, going by Numbers 26. This officially was some 601,730 men, pardon me, over the age of 20, and also around 23,000 Levites, all men of course. So when you add the together with this, the women and the children, there would have been somewhat over 2 million people. You know, I sometimes think about the great weight of responsibility that was upon Joshua at, at this point in his life. God had chosen and prepared him to lead his people into a new land, a place where they had been told they would be blessed, but also where they would have to overcome the temptations that existed there. I'm talking about false religions and false gods and so on and so forth, pagan rites. You know, this really makes me think of the similar weight that lay upon Jesus as he lived a life without sin, revealed the truth of God and went to the cross of Calvary. Moses' ministry through the wilderness leading the people to the Jordan was a type of Jesus' ministry on the earth. Moses revealed the law of God to his people and also the standards of life God expects from his people through his miraculous power. Jesus revealed the truth of the word of God to the people and the reality of God through the miracles and so on that he performed and the life that he led. Moses could not lead the people over Jordan and into the promised land because, yes, he had disobeyed God, but mainly because he represented the law and he can't be saved through the law. Joshua had proved himself a faithful servant to Moses and to God. He had, along with Caleb, been one of the two who had returned from the promised land and gave a positive report. So Joshua, if you think about it, had already been in the promised land and was now to lead the people into it. Jesus came with the sole intention of going sinless to the cross as the perfect sacrifice for sin. He did so and was raised to new life. In doing this, he now leads all those who believe in him and in his finished work at Calvary into the real promised land that being eternal life with him in the kingdom of God. So now is the time for Joshua to arise and begin the commission that God has given him. We now continue with the next verse of our text. Joshua chapter 1 verse 3. Let's read it again together. Joshua chapter 1 verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Now the words, that I have given you, there in the King James, are actually one Hebrew word. And that word is natan, natan. And it means to grant, to, de to bestow, to dedicate and so on. The land of Canaan had been granted, bestowed 
to the Israelites before they even entered it by God himself. Just as now the new life as new creations in Christ Jesus has been granted, bestowed upon us, before we repented and are saved. The promised land was a promise of God, just as new life in Christ is a promise to us, to all who will believe and repent and be saved. However, just as it was with Joshua and the Israelites, it is the same with us, in that we must take those steps into it to possess it. Joshua chapter 1 verse 3 again. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Now the Israelites under Joshua had to first cross the river of Jordan, which was swollen in flood at the time. Then once they had crossed over into the land, there were enemies living in that promised land that had to be overcome in order for them to settle in it. Yes, God was with them as they did battle, but they had to physically do battle and take the land. As it is said, first the physical, then the spiritual. That means that all that happened to the Old Testament Israelites is a type and a shadow of things that we will encounter in the spiritual realm as believers in Christ Jesus. We must remember that, brothers and sisters. It's important to remember. And it's here that we must learn these lessons, my dear brothers and sisters. For if we do not, we will end up making the same mistakes as the Old Testament Israelites made in their walk in the Promised Land. Now once they had crossed the River Jordan, their walk of faith really began. So it is with us who are born again. I've gone over this so many times in previous sermons, but it seems that many never really learn the lessons. There's a well-known scripture that goes like this, and it's Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. The straight or narrow gate, if you will, is our river Jordan. It is the cutting off of our old life and the entering into the new life. It is salvation through Christ Jesus. It is our moment of salvation. Whereas the straight or narrow way is our entering into the promised land and overcoming old enemies like old habits, old desires, old lusts and so on and so forth as we go on. This is called putting to death the old nature. It's a narrow way, brethren. This, dear brothers and sisters, is not a quick fix. As the Israelites found out when they crossed into the Promised Land, it's not a quick fix. The taking of the Promised Land took a generation. Our battle with the old nature and with the attempts of the devil to use it to destroy us is a lifelong journey. It's a marathon, not a sprint, as I've heard many people say. 
we have to remember that the entry or gate into the kingdom of God is narrow. It's through the one and only name, Christ Jesus. But the way after it is also narrow. The life that we live after we come to Christ is also narrow, straight, because God's standards are strict and unchanging in our walk along it. However, just as the Israelites were not alone in their walk in the Promised Land, neither are we in our walk. After God had set out the boundaries of the land before them in verse 4 of our text, he told them the following. Let's read verse 5 of our text. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5. Here we go. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Yes, that was indeed for the Old Testament Israelites. Pardon me. But we today have a similar promise from the one who will guide us through our own walk. Turn with me now, if you will, to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. And I know that you will know these scriptures well. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. Matthew 28, verse 18. Here we go. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. In his charge to Joshua, God goes on to stir him to be strong for his task as follows. And we're going to read verse 6 and 7 now of our text today. Joshua 1, verse 6 and 7. Here we go. Joshua 1, verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Now then, God knew that although Joshua was now a soldier and used to battles, he would now be responsible for the whole nation and would face stern opposition as they advanced. However, Joshua was not to do this in his own strength, but to be obedient to the commandments of God. If this was going to be done, it had to be done God's way or it would fail. It's no different in our own walk with Christ, brothers and sisters. We can make plans, we can build projects for mass evangelistic events because we feel it should be done. But if God has not ordained it, nor sanctioned it, they will fail dismally. These are lessons that we must heed from the Old Testament. We have several examples where the Israelites tried to do things on their own, but failed, such as King Saul not obeying the instructions of the prophet Samuel in the destruction of the Amalekites in 1 Samuel 15, 
We won't go into them now for time, but read them for yourself. 1 Samuel 15. Or when they try to go into the promised land against God's command. After their refusal to do so, after the spies returned. And you can read that in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 40 to 46. And there are many other instances also. Why was it then that these two verses are so important? Verse 6 and 7 of our text. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Yes, brethren, God tells Joshua to be strong and courageous. But surely any, need, any leader needs that. Let's take a look at the actual Hebrew words used though if you will allow me. Now the word strong in both verses is the Hebrew word kazakh, kazakh, and it means to fasten upon, to seize, to be strong, courageous, and so on. Whereas the word courageous or courage in those verses that we read are the same Hebrew word, that being amatz, amatz which means to be alert, physically, on foot, or mentally in courage, to confirm, to be courageous, to be of good courage, steadfastly minded, fortified, established, to make strong, and so on. Through these words used in the original text, God was telling Joshua that he not only needed to be strong physically, which no doubt he was as a soldier, but he was also to be strong mentally, spiritually. For God knew that the battles that lay before them, Joshua and the people, would yes be fought in the flesh as it were, but also in the spirit realm. The battles to take the promised land would be against a spiritual evil just as much as they were against the enemies in the flesh. So it was for Joshua and the people with him and so it is with us today. Yes, people will reject the gospel message that you and I may share with them. They may scoff, they may laugh, they may even be physically aggressive with you. However, just as with Joshua, we also face a spiritual enemy. Remember these wise words of the Apostle Paul as we read them together in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to to 18. These warning words of the Apostle Paul. Verse 10, here we go. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 
above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. Praise God for his word, brethren. How was it then that Joshua was to strengthen himself and to be courageous, to see victory over these wicked enemies who had defiled the land with their demonic pagan rites and rituals? The answer came in the next verse of our text today, verse 8 of Joshua chapter 1. Joshua 1 verse 8, here we go. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Joshua was to commit himself to the word of God, which to him at that time contained the five books of Moses, which are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. These books contained the creation, the history of God's interaction with mankind up to where Joshua was at that point. And also the law, which reveals the standards that God expects of his people. My dear brothers and sisters, the message to us today, through this Old Testament text, is the same as it was to Joshua. We who are born again have entered the fulfilment of what was the shadow or type revealed to us in our text today. We have gone through the narrow gate. We have crossed over, as it were, the Jordan, as did Joshua. Our gate is Christ Jesus, and we are now walking on the narrow way, which is our walk in this world as disciples of Jesus Christ. If you've learned anything through this sermon, I hope it is that absolutely nothing has changed, except maybe technology in our day. Mankind is still the same. Just as much as Joshua was about to embark upon a campaign of warfare to take the promised land, so we are very much involved in a lifetime, or lifelong rather, campaign of spiritual warfare as we walk about in this wicked world, bringing the light of God through his word and through our lifestyle. The message to us, therefore, is the same as it was to Joshua. And I read again in verse 9. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. This message of encouragement in the last verse of our text today has not changed, brothers and sisters, from the day of Joshua to our day because God has not nor will he ever change in fact so real was this promise of God to the Apostle Paul he quoted from it from verse 5 of our text to prove it to the Hebrews to whom he wrote the following turn with me now if you will to our final scripture today 
Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he saith, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. So then, my dear brothers and sisters, if you are going through a difficult time right now, feeling lost or alone in the battle of this life, remember that ours is a spiritual battle. But we still need to wage it in the strength of the Lord and not in our own strength. We as believers in Christ Jesus have come through that narrow gate which is Christ Jesus. We are now embarked upon our lifelong journey along the straight and the narrow way. For it is as it was with Joshua to be God's way and we are not to turn from it to the right hand nor to the left because God's promises are true brethren and his word is trustworthy you and I are now in the promised land as it were in Christ Jesus so let us be bold let us be strong and let us be very courageous and walk thou in it so until the next time my brothers and sisters may god richly bless and keep you amen